Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. We're back in our Resident Evil style tutorial series where um, it's, it's more of an informational tutorial today just because I, I did say this a couple episodes ago that I would talk about how to set up your environments. Um, if you look at mine at the moment, it looks very sort of fleshed out. It looks like there's lots of stuff. If I go into the similar camera angles, you, it looks like we have a very fleshed out world with um, lots of detail. But when you actually take away uh, and make it unlit, and we kind of zoom out, you can kind of see just how little is actually in our world. It's important to keep your uh, amount of items down um, because obviously the more things you add, the more pressure you're putting on uh, the engine to render everything and, and make everything look nice. Um, for example, if we look at this bridge in particular, uh, if I walk over here, We'll walk through the level, and you can kind of see everything in its glory. But we've got this one corridor. Adding some lighting in, in this left-hand side doorway, and the shadow just kind of makes it feel like there's something in there. Um, adding these panels on the corridor, again, it's just a very small detail, but obviously it adds quite a lot. But it's the outside that's really, truly interesting. Because looking at this angle here... It really does look like there's a lot in this scene. We've got trees, we've got the buildings, we've got the grass, the walls. Um, but if we, again, come out of it and go over there, there really isn't anything behind it. There's, like, nothing here. But because it's nighttime and we're using um, sort of point lights to, to illuminate the area around it, there really doesn't need to be much behind it. And these buildings are only here to add depth. And block out these because if I looked in this direction, there's nothing there, and you'd see that terrible horizon. Whereas if you look over here, uh, it's blocked by the buildings. If I go to where this camera would be, it's completely blocked up uh, the horizon, that empty space, which is what you want to remove. So when we look at it like this in game, it looks like we have this really detailed, interesting world, but when we pull back, there's just not as much there. And it's all, because we're dealing with those um, very specific angles, we can basically fill that space. I'll run back to where I was talking about before. But we can fill that space with very minimal amounts of items and buildings and um, detail and ultimately end up with something that looks far more polished than it actually is. And it's a trick that a lot of... Um, games even triple a games will will do um and it's always the understanding that less is more and a friend of mine used to use the um wonderful term uh using smoke and mirrors to um trick your your audience or your your you know your your players into believing the world is a lot bigger than it actually is and here's that scene with the bridge um you've got the gate there and then if you look past that gate you can see the walkway and a couple of houses either side and the mountain just off in the distance and it really does just make your world look uh, a lot more full and interesting. If we go to the other fence, because I haven't done this side yet, uh, most of this dock area isn't finished yet, but um, we'll, we'll go and have a look anyway. And that's how it looks without just that extra bit of detail. You can see the break in the water. We can still see the mountain, but there's literally nothing there to break up that horizon and uh, make it look more interesting for your players. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I mean by uh, smoke and mirrors and kind of uh, setting up your environment to trick... It sounds awful, but to trick your players into believing there's more beyond these this gate, beyond these walls, than meets the eye. Um, and it's I think it's just a wonderful way to um, add just a little bit extra for your players. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found this environmental, um, conversation, like, you know, informational tutorial helpful in understanding how to block out your areas. Um, this starting area was done all with cubes. So another wonderful thing you can do if you're not really too sure about how to, uh, start setting up areas, you can also, um, just start bringing out cubes 
and maybe you're like okay that looks nice let's do um a little arrangement you know and kind of try and plan out stuff that your players will see in the world let's say we wanted to set up some crates we might go okay how does that look does that look nice maybe not because that's hanging over um you might also say okay uh i want to set up a little ramp that the players will be able to go up and then you might say okay let's just angle this out and see kind of what we can do here uh will that be too steep of an incline uh, it might be so we could say okay let's try that instead and then we might say okay we need a smaller cube here so we're looking for a cube that's more that more fits the space better and we could say oh did that wrong you might say okay that looks more better now and more realistic to fit a uh plank there that the player can walk up and then maybe you have that continue on over here to do something up here but it's just an idea um you can you'll notice this uh, that i've done this very well with um the stairs for example these if you look at the earlier videos these were just um triangles that uh, i put in here and then blocked out with rectangles and things like that you can still see some of it obviously here uh, and in here i've still got some of it in the world which obviously still need to be replaced but um yeah this was all just cubes that i'd set up into a corridor just to test out the camera um and oh delete that out and the same with in here i just put in a, a bunch of rectangles got the angle that i wanted uh, and then started filling it up with items to stop the player from you know forcing the player into this direction you can see my smoke monster there um and i kind of forced the player into these angles to get through up into the docks this is also one of the last thing i wanted to talk about in this episode was the level transition so before I showed you how to set up into separate levels, which is very similar to what Resident Evil does. However, if you want a much more fluid transition, what we can do is set up a room in the same level like I have here. So this is just a cube that I've uh, done with. I've, I've got four cubes, um, done the walls and the roofs and stuff. And um, basically just set it up to... Uh, be in the same level i use this area i use the S area inside this building i'd set up just to keep it all accurate but you could have it somewhere completely different in your level as long as you can't see it um you could just have it here and what we can do is if i open up our level transition now this is no different to what we had before it's the same thing i just edited it to allow me to do in level transitions in, as opposed to loading up another level which would be slower um, so the same thing again, it's still got the E uh, to interact setup. Um, but all we do is we just set the transform and we find the player start. It's, it, it's exactly the same uh, as the level transition. It's just being done all within the same level and there's no l open level. There's just purely setting the actual transform and that transform is the player name that's in here. So what you would do is uh, you could expose the um i think mine's done on the player start so we have a player start this instance editable and if we go back to the level you can see i've got warehouse east and if we go into here what it's going to do we, we got this player start here which we have called warehouse east so when we interact with this doorway by pressing the e inside this box it looks for warehouse uh, east which is this one the tag and it will change our location to there uh, and same with this one this one here is Sen uh, it's supposed to be sienna but Senna uh, back streets and this one has Senna back streets um, and it's the only uh the only other one we have at the moment is this one here which is uh, the canals east if we come up to the canals here we've got canals east and same for if we click on this one we have uh, warehouse west and this one is the warehouse west exit or entrance, however you want to look at it. And it's just about having the same, so these level transitions, wherever you want to send that player, it just needs to have the same name on that player start. And again, looking at this, it's just, it's, it's exactly the same as we were doing before. There is just no need to open the level uh, or store that level name uh, to do that. It will just automatically send the player to the new area. We don't have to do anything with the cameras because that player will automatically spawn 
within one of these boxes. And you know what happens when the, the character enters the box, it will change the camera. So I'll do another quick preview. If we go over here, <clears throat> ignore our shadow monster thing, shadow person, we'll, we'll head over this way. And um, we will go down this way. Oh, you might have noticed some red fling, flickering dots. That's, I've, I've added cameras just to make it feel a bit nicer. So um, yeah. Uh, if you notice any red blinking dots, that's what it is. So yeah, if I press enter now, it automatically changes the camera because I'm entering that box. I'm teleporting into inside that box and it picks up on that uh, that entrance. I'm lagging a bit. But um, yeah, hopefully you found this useful, this episode. It's just a bit more of a talking about how I set things up and how I kind of create these scenes. Um, and of course, the level transition, how I change that to allow everything to happen in the same level. Much more... Um, optimized and um setup friendly because you can work now within the same level um the only th the only thing is you have to obviously be careful about how big you're making your levels um so if you want i would always suggest having some form of a level transition um in the sense that you know for ex if i was going to explain this so I, my plan was to have the player spawn you go through there's a um you can you can ride on the boat but not until you've done the um open the gate here there'll be a gate here you open that one up the, the gate will go down then you can interact with the boat and the boat would uh drive off then you'd ha i would personally change the level at that point to a completely new area as opposed to having like another dock maybe over here and you get out and do that because that's a lot of stuff in one level so keep your levels contained to small areas um, like I might put another door entrance into this building here where there'll be something to do in here. Um, there'll be something up here as well um, that you can do. And then once you finish with this area, so I should probably add a little river going this direction so you can open this gate and leave, but then have it open a new level to the next new area. So you might have another dock that loads up and you can run around that area and do something else. Um, but for like room to room changes, um, I would just have it doing this method because uh, it's a lot quicker. Uh, Resident Evil, I'm pretty sure, does something similar to this. They have a lot of rooms in the same world. But obviously, when you go to a new area, I think that's how they also do it. So it would be very much like the Resident Evil, especially things like Resident Evil 2 at the moment, like when you enter the sewers or you go, you go down into the police area. I think those are all different levels, but most of it is all in the same um the same world there's room to room changes of the same world but yeah thank you so much guys for watching hopefully you found this useful and i'll see you in the next episode much love take care bye